So, Super Chat. Raleigh, Tulsi still anti-gay, question mark. What's her health care deal? So, I don't think Tulsi's anti... So, this is this is how she's explained it, and to me, it makes perfect sense. She uh, Tulsi Gabbard grew up in a conservative household. And because of that, she had a certain perspective on on the LGBT community. So her perspective was clearly impacted by the fact that her father was anti-gay, was conservative. Um, so that, that's how she operated back then when she was very young in her like uh, teens and early 20s. And then she evolved on the issue when she learned more things. And uh, when it comes to healthcare, so yeah, when it comes to the to issues of, you know, I, I don't, I can't fault somebody for being born into a family that was conservative and they took on those ideas when she's changed. If she didn't change, obviously, yeah, then that'll be a problem. But she has changed and I think she's shown a history of that. So I wouldn't go after her on that. Uh, what's her healthcare deal? Yeah. So... She says she supports Medicare for all, but when the question came up at the debate, would she abolish private insurance? Again, the, that question is so poorly worded, poorly framed, because you're not abolishing all private insurance. You're abolishing duplicate private insurance. So the way it works in Canada and the way it would work in the U.S. is in, under a Medicare for all system, private insurers would not be able to duplicate the same kind of coverage that the Medicare for all system offers because then what's the point then essentially it's a public option so and, and the reason you do that the reason you cut out the private insurers is because if you didn't if you made it a public option then the private insurance companies would be able to offset all of the sick people to the public system drain the public system of resources and then the private uh companies would be able to have all, all the healthy people and they'd be fine so that's why you can't separate it you need everybody in the same pool. That's what brings all the costs down. That's what makes it a universal system. It can't just be a public option. And on top of that, if you made it a public option, people would have to pay into it. So they'd have to choose to do that. And a lot of people wouldn't be able to afford to do that. So you have to make it a universal system that everybody pays into. That way, you have the wealthiest people paying into the same system that the poorest people are paying into. That's how you have a true universal system that that services everyone equally based on the healthcare needs, not on not on wealth. So, the question at the debate was dumb because they asked you, or they 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 asked the candidates, would you abolish private insurance? Would you would you abolish your private insurance? Which has another layer of stupidity because it's because are you asking the candidate personally would they abolish their private insurance or? Would they abolish everyone's private insurance? It's, it's such a stupid question. And on top of that, private insurance would still exist. So you're not abolishing it. It exists, but it exists in a limited capacity because they would not be able to offer the same uh, coverage that the universal system offers. So this is like this shows you once again how how much misinformation is spread out from the mainstream press just based on the framing of questions, not even content, not even talking about these issues, just the framing of the debate. There is a problem here. But so Tulsi didn't put her hand up there. Um, I think only so I, f I forget which debate Tulsi was in. She was in the debate with Bernie, right? I don't even know anymore. But so um, but but this, the same question was asked at both debates. You had Warren put up her hand. Bill de Blasio put up her hand. Then the second debate, you had uh, Kamala Harris put up her hand and Bernie Sanders put up her hand. Tulsi Gabbard did not put up her hand to say that she would abolish private insurance. Which leads me to believe, at least leads some to believe, that she would not be willing to fight for Medicare for all in the same way that other candidates, or I should say other candidates, in the same way that Bernie Sanders would. Everybody else, I have some questions. Elizabeth Warren was not tough about supporting Medicare for all until that debate. So you could argue that she would not really have your, uh, or she would not be willing to fight as hard as she could to be able to get Medicare for all through because she's been wavering on that issue until now. Kamala Harris, of course, walked back immediately <laughs> on Morning Joe the next day. Every time she talked about abolishing private insurance, she's walked it back the next day. Kamala Harris, all about going for those uh, those highlight reel moments and then doesn't actually mean any of it. So I definitely do not trust Kamala Harris on the issue of Medicare for all. Um, and Tulsi, I don't know what her thinking is. 
So it may be because she thought of the question the same way that I did, how, how flawed the question actually was, because you're not abolishing private insurance. But if you're going to if you're going to err on the side of caution, then you should err on the side of being on the left when you're erring on the side of caution. So don't err on the side of caution and say, no, I don't want to abolish all private insurance. Err on the side of caution and say, yes, I do. Except just to be clear, we're not abolishing all private insurance. So that's the way she should have went there. I don't no but Tulsi she's not gonna win there are other progressives in the race um and you may think she's the best one she's pulling at one percent it's not gonna happen Bernie has a support behind uh behind him Warren has a lot of people that uh, consider themselves to be supportive uh, on these progressive issues but they also really want to see a uh a female president. I totally understand it. So I, I get that position, but Bernie, in my mind, is the only way to actually push these issues forward because he's building a grassroots movement, because he has the biggest movement behind him. He has the most volunteers, the most individual donors. He has the movement already, and he's talking about how you, even when I become president, that's just the beginning. You need people from the outside putting pressure on Congress to get any of this through. So he's aware of the structural issues in order to actually get any of this passed. And he's been consistent pushing back against the powerful and the wealthy his entire career, 40 years of it. So to me, there's just no comparison between him and, and uh, Elizabeth Warren. But that said, um, I still like Warren, just not anywhere near to the level that I like Bernie.